Hello viewers, let me introduce you to this 1995 Seasport 27 Pilot. This is a fantastic all season boat. It is powered by a Volvo Penta AD41 turbocharged diesel mated to a DPD1 dual prop out drive. It burns 7 gallons per hour cruising at 22 knots and averages 4 gallons per hour in mixed boating. It is ideal for boating in Puget Sound as well as most inshore waters between here and southeast Alaska. It has been meticulously maintained. At wide open throttle, she makes 25 knots at 3800 RPMs. She's a real beauty on the water and at the dock, but her beauty is much more than skin deep. Let's go for a deep dive into her history. She came out of the mold in June of 1995 at Wright Brothers Boat Builders in Bellingham, Washington. Sea Sport boats built legendary hulls with skillfully hand laid and hand rolled by axial roving. These hulls were further reinforced by integrating all internal bulkheads to the structure to create incredibly strong and durable boats. These boats can withstand way more punishment than their human crews. The heart of this boat is the reliable and easy to maintain Volvo Penta AD41 turbo diesel. She is fed by a pair of 67 gallon diesel tanks via a convenient fuel manifold and water separator. Marine diesels are simpler and more durable than gasoline marine motors. They are also more fuel efficient and produce much less carbon monoxide. Diesel is also safer than gasoline because it is not associated with explosive vapors that can accumulate in the bilge. The exhaust elbow was replaced in August 2020 at 808 hours. This motor is equipped with three battery banks, number one for starting, number two for house use, including running the refrigerator, and number three dedicated to electronics and autopilot. Each bank is electrically isolated and can be combined for emergency starting. Power is transmitted to the water via the Volvo Penta DPD1 dual prop out drive. The counter rotating propellers are highly efficient and provide truer backing for enhanced docking maneuverability. She is also equipped with power trim tabs for a comfortable and level ride. She is also equipped with an easy steer linkage for the 9.9 .9 horsepower Yamaha kicker. The Yamaha 9.9 .9 horsepower kicker has an electric start and is fed by a separate 8 gallon fuel tank. She has been fed an exclusive ethanol free diet and can be steered by the autopilot via an easy steer linkage. The instrument cluster is easy to read and complete. This motor has 940 hours on it, which is remarkably low for a boat of her age. She has been spoiled, spending most of her life in this comfy barn protected from the elements. Most of her hours were accumulated during summer crabbing seasons. Let's do a walk around. She has a self-launching Bruce Anchor and Simpson Lawrence Anchor Windlass at the bow. Her forward raked windows reduce glare, heat buildup, and shed rain, as well as providing ample space on the dash for electronics. The elevated pilot house provides unsurpassed 360 degree vision and a panoramic view for passengers. She has a heavy duty rub rail, and combines a stepped chine and deep V for stability and maneuverability. Her 8 foot 6 inch beam can be trailered without permits. The fishing cockpit is 7 feet 10 inches wide by 7 feet 2 inches long with plenty of space for four burly fishermen. There is a telescoping boarding ladder on the generous swim step and plenty of room for a dinghy and crab pots on the rooftops. The radar arch can be folded down for transport with a 13 foot clearance or 15 foot 6 inch clearance with the radar arch up and antennas down. She has VHF, CB, FM, TV and 800 megahertz cellular antennas. There is also a no strike lightning dissipator on top. She has a Raymarine R20XX radar and R125 GPS receiver on the arch. This is the telescoping ladder deployed from the swim step. There is also an ice chest and there are cleats on the swim step to tie up the dinghy.
Here is the easy steer linkage connecting the main out drive to the kicker motor. This allows the kicker to be steered through the main steering mechanisms and this also includes the autopilot. Let's step aboard. Here is the generous cockpit. There are mounts for Scotty Downriggers, Marinko Marine Power Outlets, and fish on rod holder mounts on each side. There are also cockpit lights, boarding steps, and plenty of stainless steel grab rails. The lower roof is convenient for crab pot storage, while a dinghy fits on the upper roof. Now, let's step up on the gunnel, and we'll step across the doghouse. Here are the kicker controls, easily accessible from the cockpit. There is a nice integrated fish box in the gunnel, although for anything bigger than a large salmon, you'd want to use the ice chest instead. Next to this is a storage locker for the propane system. And back here we have the ice chest. Over here is a convenient step for getting up on the rooftops. There are plenty of grab rails to make it safe. And up on top of the radar arch, again we have VHF, lightning arrester, CB, and cellular antennas, as well as the radar and GPS. There is a convenient aft steering and engine control station, complete with a remote control for the autopilot. There is also shore power. There are convenient shelves under the gunnel for storage. There is a 8 gallon gasoline tank under the gunnel for the kicker. And on the other side is the priming pump for the kicker fuel system. Cleanup in the cockpit is made quick and easy with a raw water washdown and a self bailing deck. The doghouse can be easily lifted with one hand, revealing the engine compartment. Oil levels, coolant levels, and the raw water strainer are all easily accessible from the top of the engine. This is the fuel manifold, which allows you to switch between starboard and port side fuel tanks. There's the raw water strainer on top. And the accessory belts are relatively easy to access. There are two Optima batteries for banks one and bank two. There is a deep cycle battery for bank number three. Here is a modification that we had added. This is a sump tube welded to the bottom of the oil pan, making it easier to do oil changes. This hatch gives us access to the battery switches. The switch on the left selects between banks one and two, which are the main starter and house batteries. The switch on the right is for combining bank number three for emergency starts. Now it's time to step inside. There is a step down into the cabin. This gives even six and a half footers, plenty of headspace inside the cabin. On the left, we have our dinette. This seats four adults quite comfortably. There is some map storage and lighting above. 
Down below in the back, we have a Norcold refrigerator freezer. This operates on 12 volts or shore power. The freezer is good for keeping bait frozen. The head is located in the back of the cabin. It is a full height head, so you do not have to stoop. It has two windows, including one that opens. There is a handheld shower head. There is also an easy to use electric marine head. You simply twist the control to flush. There is a vented Y diverter which allows you to send the toilet contents to the macerator or overboard. There is also a light in the head. and valves down below for the through holes for the toilet and macerator. The galley is fitted with a two burner propane stove as well as a sink and 110 power, 12 volt power and TV antenna outlets. There's a nice window by the galley and some storage space for dishes and cups. The pilot seat folds forward, giving us an incredible amount of countertop space for a small boat. There is also a cutting board which is removable, revealing a very deep stainless steel sink. Down below, is a little cubby where a microwave can be installed. And below that there is a propane sniffer for safety and a tremendous amount of storage space down here for cookware and dry goods. Here is a hydraulic system for the engine controls. These make shifting and throttle controls effortless. There is more storage under the dinette. This is accessible from both sides. There is another access back here. This is a good place for infrequently used but essential items. Under the dinette there is another 12 volt outlet, TV antenna outlet, and shore power outlet. Again we have TV, 12 volt, and shore power outlets in the galley. Here are several very convenient storage drawers. These have a latch on them that keep them closed unless you lift while you pull. We've never had these drawers fly open while underway. These make it very easy to keep all of your things organized and secure. 
This boat is also equipped with a forced air heating system that uses engine heat. This can keep the cabin nice and toasty warm as well as keep the windows defrosted and defogged. This midship berth is one of my favorite features on this boat. This has its own light and a little storage shelf where you can put your glasses and phone while you're sleeping. It's nice and cozy. It extends from under the passenger seat to under the dinette. It stays nice and warm while you're camping. There are custom curtains that close off this area as well as the V-Bird. This boat also comes with a matching set of cruise curtains for all of the windows. Let's move forward and up into the elevated pilot house area. If you buy this boat, we'll throw in these two matching Seasport Pilot mugs. Now let's step up into the pilot station. The pilot station can be operated from either the seated or standing position. The elevated pilot house gives the pilot a remarkable 360 degree view around the boat. The passenger seat has a very convenient folding table. The electronics include a Raytheon R20XX radar, and Raymarine Axiom 9 RV multifunctional display, fish finder, and chart plotter. There is also a Raymarine ST6001 autopilot. There is a Simpson Lawrence Anchor Windless. And again, this boat has a remarkably low 940 hours on it. These are heating and window defogging vents that work very effectively to keep the windows clear and cabin warm. Each window also has its own independent wiper. This boat is also equipped with a Raytheon VHF loud hailer and a citizen's band radio. There are also controls here for the power trim tabs. Now let's step forward into the V-berth. The walkway actually extends well up into the V-berth giving plenty of extra space for additional passengers up in the V-berth. If you had to, you could see 12 adults on this boat. Four in the dinette, two in the passenger seat, five in the V-berth, and one in the pilot seat. 
There's a nice storage shelf that goes all the way around to the perimeter of the V-berth and an opening hatch up above. There is a nice heater outlet in the V-berth which keeps it nice and comfortable. And there's a nice privacy curtain here. There's plenty of standing room in the V-berth so that you can change your clothes if you needed to. Under this little panel are all the DC circuit breakers as well as access to everything under the instrument panel for service and maintenance. With the cushions installed, there is quite a large area in here where two or even three people can sleep. Up forward is access to the anchor locker where we have 225 feet of rope and 30 feet of chain attached to the anchor. Looking back towards the rest of the cabin, you can see that this is a very large and comfortable V-berth. It can be very pleasant laying in here with the hatch open on a sunny day taking a nap. There is more storage space under the passenger seat as well as this compartment under the pilot's feet. The electronics for the autopilot live in this space, but there's lots of room for gear down here. Seasport does an exceptional job at making all of the spaces inside the boat accessible for maintenance and for future modifications. Here is the AC breaker panel. With the cushions removed, we can see there is a remarkable amount of storage space up in the V-berth as well. It is also evident how solidly built this boat is. Here is the heater that takes engine heat and sends it to the rest of the boat. Here is the dinette converted into a double bed. There is plenty of room for two adults to sleep here. And let's take one last look at that remarkable galley. At all that countertop space. Just think of all the wonderful meals that you can prepare and serve in here. And there is one last compartment that I didn't show you before. In front of the engine compartment is a nice, big, and deep fish box. We actually never put fish in here, but this is a great place to put extra fenders, buoys, line, and a spare anchor.
Now let's take a look at this trailer. This is an easy loader galvanized triple axle trailer rated for an 11,500 pound load. It is equipped with a power winch RC30, remote controlled power winch. It comes with a remote control key fob that makes it possible to operate it remotely. This trailer is equipped with electric on hydraulic braking. This means that it uses an electric brake controller in your truck to operate the hydraulic brakes. This trailer has a lot of rollers. These support the weight of the boat and also make launching the boat as easy as possible. The triple axle trailer gives plenty of redundancy in case of a wheel failure. This trailer is also equipped with a freshwater flushing system which allows each axle to be flushed with fresh water. It has been flushed religiously after every use. You can see what excellent condition the backing plates are in as well as the roller assemblies. This is a very heavy duty trailer. The triple axle trailer is also very resistant to sway. It makes for a very stable towing platform. There are no flimsy components on this trailer. All of the electrical and hydraulic components are fully functional on the trailer. This trailer has been modified to fit this boat perfectly. The hitch coupler on this trailer is welded to the frame and the frame is equipped with a pole tongue adapter which will allow the use of a weight distributing hitch on the truck. This creates an extremely stable and safe towing setup. There is a battery backup for the breakaway braking system. And again, this trailer is rated for 11,500 pounds. The total weight of the boat and trailer combined is actually pretty close to 10,000 pounds. So this is very well within the rated capacity for the trailer. There is also an extra heavy duty jack. And again, here's the welded coupler and pull tongue adapter. You can very comfortably and confidently tow this boat and trailer with a three-quarter ton pickup truck. This has been a comprehensive tour inside and out of this Seasport 27 Pilot. Hopefully you can imagine yourself and your family or crew enjoying yourselves on the water in this boat. If you would like to buy this boat, please contact us at 1995 Seasport 27 Pilot for sale at gmail.com. A boat like this with so few hours is very rare, so don't let this one get away.